A warm welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for what could be the final match of the day. Illinois leads 1-0 against Indiana here in the epic eight of Heroes of the Dorm. My name is Day9. I am joined by the ever so clever Grubby and the wonderful and intelligent Trixler as we are heading into this match. It is the first time that we're going to get the opportunity to see a new battleground. Ooh, but more on that in a bit. I mean, at this point in time, Illinois showing a little bit of unorthodox choosing with Abathur, but overall, very solid decision making. Yeah, Illidan and Abathur are a great pairing, and it has some counterplay, but if the Illidan player plays it well, with all the support that he's getting, it can be absolutely devastating. And they played it to a T. It was very clean, very well done by Illinois. Whatever mistakes we say the other team made, they really made it happen there, mm -hmm. and I'm impressed. Yeah, I gotta agree as well. Abathur was really doing a lot of work. Remember, he's doing stuff in the shadows, if you will, in the background, and that Abathur player was just on point. So nice job by Mr. Berkeys. But looking into it, this is gonna be Wilted here from Indiana, the from the Mighty Churros, um, an ultimate Frisbee player. Nice, I love that game. And of course, much like anyone who ever gets the taste of competitive gaming and esports, dreams to one day build an esports company of his own. Very excited to see it come up to fruition because honestly, this entire industry is built on passionate people who grew up playing the games they cared about. And of course, Wilted is the character who was Malfurion in the last game. His primary support is Rhaegar. I'm very excited to see him bust that out in future matches. On the other side, Illinois Wrath, who led with Diablo in the last match, is also in, what's the word, is it a polyglot? is the name a of someone who speaks lots of languages. I, I think you might be right. I am the king of the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Give me those SAT points. Look at that. Fluently speaks Spanish, English, Korean, and is currently studying Japanese. Cardistry and card trick enthusiast hopes to one day cut a banana in half with a single card throw. Wow. We impressive. certainly hope that he will be able to achieve his dreams. Yeah. Building an esports company, cutting a banana in half. <laughs> 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 Why his mother's? <laughs> yeah, the differing aspiration aspirations of those in college but of course the reason they are here today is heroes of the storm team centered a brawler where quite honestly the coordination of these players has been pretty exceptional today and it is my pleasure to state that we will be playing for the very first time on dragon shire which is one of my absolute favorite battlegrounds let's take a look The match begins with three lanes, a moderate distance between many of them, meaning that roaming is always a big early threat. At the far extreme ends, you will see mercenary camps, bruisers on the tops and uh, siege camps on the bottoms. The control shrines allow you to free the Dragon Knight, which is a massive boost to the pushing potential. And unlike in other maps, the power is controlled by the players. So once the team has unlocked the Dragon Knight, they have the opportunity to attack whichever lane they want, wherever they want. And this is again the sort of um, the sort of map where team fighting is important, but it's essential that you are splitting up to yeah. manage to control the bottom and southern shrines. It's a different ty type of teamwork. It's coordinated teamwork across the battleground. And we'll see how players will utilize that here. But let's jump into the heroes B and pick Illinois going straight for the Jaina pick. Yep. And uh, since uh, since Indiana saw you are capitalizing, well, you're monopolizing some of the damage dealers there, taking Jaina, wanted to make sure they've got Vala themselves. We'll be taking uh, Diablo there on the Electra. He was ETC last time, now we'll be going Diablo. Again, Dragonshire is also one of the maps where it's very popular to roam in between the middle and bottom lane as a group of four. And Diablo has a huge early game boost where he can use his abilities to maybe get some quick pickoffs. At this point, we see pretty much standard selections with Jaina and Uther, very well-rounded heroes, very strong in their roles. Of course, Dayun with Illidan just played fantastically, was never in a threatening range to take much damage, and whenever he was in the thick of things, people were dropping like flies around him. <gasps> Taronda, Tim. Taronda. Hello, Taronda. The day nine favorite to the second best hero in the world, according second to you. Second best hero in the world, Asmodan. but only when paired with Diablo, because they're <laughs> so good at roaming together as a pair. And then Savannah will be the follow-up here. A lot of damage once again here for Indiana, but notice the trend. The pick heroes have low health pools, but put out a lot of damage. They need to be careful, because Illinois can follow up into something pretty crazy. ETC can be some lockdown. Anything that can help dive those type of heroes can be incredibly powerful here. Kerrigan, a hero that we haven't seen, could be potentially good. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to a Kerrigan pick on this map especially. It's not as common here because Kerrigan often thrives in very close quarters, and this is a little bit more of an open map. In, some, in fact, some of the most, yeah, one of the most open maps indeed. Abathur once again on Mr. Berks. It worked last time. Dayon on Illidan worked last time. This is almost a carbon copy of their composition. Just instead of Sylvanas, they've got Jaina. Instead of Diablo, they've got ETC. But the idea is the same. All their hopes are pinned on Illidan. I'm a little scared with the Abathur pick just because in the early game, the shrines are so important. You need physical bodies to prevent them from being grabbed. But we'll see how it'll work out for Illinois. I don't want to doubt them because we uh, we saw in the first game, he's pretty good with Abathur. But Indiana <laughs> following up with a strong support here, grabbing the Rhaegar. Uh, this time not on the Malfurion, who I said is really good at healing mm, the yeah. three ranged damage dealers. Now the Rhaegar. What do you uh, think? Well, it's going to be a little bit dicey because, of course, Diablo is going to be their front line. And very often, Uther and ETC can both really be in the front in the thick of things. There's not as much front line support there. So as we head into the game, can Diablo be what Indiana needs to stay alive and to hold on to let those damage dealers in the back, the Vala, the Taranda, the Sylvanas, really shine. Really quick, let's just check out the mini-map. As remember, this will be the focal point for a lot of our teams uh, in this bottom left corner, as well as the one up here at the far uh, top middle as well. Both shrines will unlock the huge Dragon Knight in here, which they can use to beat down on their opponent's fort slash structures if need be. Usually, you will see three members down in the bottom lane just because Five, there is so much potential four, with these uh, three, these mercenary camps. Two, there's one here, there's one, one here, and there's one here. Let's go ahead and put that back up there. Boom. So, yeah, it's really, really important for us to have a lot of members down that bottom lane as we're going to see all the teams starting to head over there right now. One of the most important concepts for the early game is you want to have at least one hero in each lane to soak experience. This lets you get to level 10 very very quickly, and what is so interesting to see <laughs> oh <my> gosh, that <laughs> was, is hello. <laughs> players are starting to try to exploit this by doing this. Five men in one position. We see Kay's, Delectra, Graves Robber, and Buck Nasty all shoving in mid because the mid and bottom lanes are out of sync. So now that this is being cleaned up as we head to bottom lane, we can see that only just now have the two minion lines met up. Yeah, only one footman died on the Mad Banner side, so that's the grand total of experience they miss is 58 XP points. That's almost nothing. So it's very okay for Indiana University to roam like this. They bundle their strength together. <laughs> and if they meet any intrepid adventurers from Illinois there, as for, they will be able to take them out. So you see a very conservative playstyle here from Wrath and Kirkisho. And we're going to keep seeing this rotation by Indiana University here to go to the middle and then to the bottom. Next time they get to the bottom, it's the shrine. It's the temple that they will be taking there at the bottom. I think this is one of the strongest ways to play this map, exactly as Indiana University is doing, and they have some of the best characters to do so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, with Vala and Sylvanas being able to suddenly surprise, punish, and take out as the stuns from Diablo and Taranda come in. But the extra um, boost from Sylvanas allows you to shove down towers pretty quickly. So I think that the cautious playstyle from Illinois makes perfect sense, and they need to keep doing that. So it looks like the blue team, every time, will be getting the bottom shrine. So it's all in Illinois to make sure that they secure the top shrine. As long as they can hold one, they do prevent the dragon. So Dayan and Kakisho headed up here. They grab the top shrine, which will prolong or uh, prevent the Dragon Shire from being grabbed in the middle of the map. Uh, so here we go, back and forth. Pressure will continue to happen. Kikisho will be that roamer when possible, but you see the blue team here. They have the blue team, or the uh, Shrine on lock. However, they were in a bit of a scare there as Delectra did take a lot of damage. Now keep in mind that you need to take both the North Shrine as well as the bottom one to have the lasers open up the Dragonite in the middle and have them be unlocked ready for capture. But there's no rush really to get both of them at the same time. So long as you control one of them, the game really is in a status quo. It's really in a neutral state where both teams can just do what they normally would. Push lanes, try to catch each other off guard, and get mercenary camps. And that's exactly what Illidan is doing here. Dayun, once again with that Abathur support, very quickly taking that down. However, the blue team does get the top shrine, which means the middle laser is unlocking the Dragon Knight right now. Will Indiana University be able to secure it? Graze Rubber is here. Wrath. Gonna slow that down if possible. The Electra does show up and they focus down Wrath immediately. Does he oh. get? Oh, he barely is taken down there by the nice Sentinel there from Case. Precisely why the Toronto Diablo composition is so good. Dai Yoon with the help of Abathur darting into the fray, trying to prevent the grab wow. on the Dragon Knight. And still, it doesn't happen because way at the far north, 
Kakisho is doing an amazing job at maintaining control of this top shrine. Yeah, clutch move there by Kakisho, who did not have Abathur support, but was able to get on the shrine quickly enough to make sure that the channeling stopped, because it looked like after ETC gave his life for it momentarily, Illidan came in, and he was about at the end of his prowess, at the end of the possible interruption. So you need to have those shrines being recaptured. Now, actually, it's Illinois that will have the lasers unlock the Dragonite, but with the heavy amount of concentration that the Blue Heroes have here in Indiana University, they will need to push them out aggressively in order to get it. And whoa! Oh, the long range oh. Sentinel from Taronda, oh. the cross map shot. That ability from Taronda that Kay's used so well does not stop until it either goes off the screen or hits an enemy. It is great for both scouting and, of course, denial of the Dragon Knight. I thought they had it, man. It, they were like 0.1 second away from it. Basically. Oh, man. At this point, you're starting to see where really the strategy works out. Where What shards do you grab? Where do you move people to make sure that you're able to hold off there? It's like a big game of chess currently happening right now. And uh, the red team actually starting to win this game a little bit here. Are starting to grab the uh, the Dragon Shrine. We do have Graze Rubber and Wilted, though, in a position in the top left to try and prevent it. But already, Delectra and Buck Nasty have grabbed the bottom Shrine. All right, so it's one apiece once again as uh, Illinois was actually trying to set up there to take it. But a heavy concentration of Indiana University heroes at the bottom actually managed to uh, drive Jaina out there. And now Wilted will start to take the top. No enemy activity right now from Illinois here at the top. And now once again, you see the control is constantly shifting back and forth. <laughs> and but, but neither <laughs> team has this dropped a beat No, yet. this is my ice cream. I'm going to take it back. <laughs> and this is honestly one of the reasons why I love playing on Dragonshire, because it has such an unpredictable texture to the match. The, the Dragon Knight can sometimes come down as early as four minutes in a, in a relatively quick match. It can be till 10 minutes un until the first Dragon Knight comes out, and then just a few pushes, and you're all the way at the opponent's core. Kakisha looks like he might be able to get a Graves Robber doing a great job of continuing to pick off with the multi-shots and, and <laughs> off the lasers go again. Yep. Well, keep in mind, Mad Banners is leading with 1-0 and oh here. If they manage to clinch this one, they will advance to the Heroic 4 with a 2-0 to zero score. Mighty Churros is fighting for their tournament life here if they still want to have a chance to go on. And they're fighting well. Right now, they're a little bit ahead of their opponents. Been doing a, a bit of a better job of getting that experience. Uh, uh, Illinois catching up, though, really quickly. And we're going to see the uh, blue team, Indiana University, with breaking down the turrets in the bottom right corner. They have the pressure here. They kind of own this lane a little bit. It's all about the top lane right now as uh, it, the Illidan player, Dion, is trying his best to keep the pressure mm -hmm. up and try to find a way to keep, um, of course, the lane pushing so he can keep that shrine under control. Wilted has excellent timing. Rhaegar is not particularly sturdy, and oh, Dayun might have the opportunity to exploit this as Wilted is going to begin to dart away immediately. But <laughs> in all this exchanging and all this trading of you have the shrine, now I have the shrine, now back to you again, you're seeing the players move up and down across the map a lot. There's a lot of instability in what fixed position each hero remains, and what that means is it's opportunities for a sudden sweep or a sudden pickoff. <laughs> exactly. That's why I like this map, too, because uh, all these movements here, going off by yourself, it's fraught with risk, man. It's a dangerous world out there, and it's easy to make mistakes there. Now, even though the even though the Dragonite is capturable by Illinois, it is actually the blue team pushing in here. Stage dive there by Rat, starting the initiate. Water Elemental on Buck Nasty will get taken down immediately. Beautiful identification that Buck Nasty at the south was weak, and now Kaze seems to be the target as Illidan, not in the form of Dayun, but no, Master Burks manages to step in the Abathur ultimate, and this is where it looks like it is time for Team Red, oh. for Illinois to strike, but no, I, Taronda is so excellent at denial, but not excellent enough. Get out of here, Dayun <laughs> punts Diablo all the way back to the fort. And again, is an unusual twist. The players get to control where the Dragon Knight goes. Yeah, so the Illidan player, Dayun, he's inside the Dragon Knight right now. He cannot use any of his normal basic abilities, but he gets a few new ones. It's a fiery breath as well as a kick. Furthermore, he deals massive damage to enemy fortifications. So that is the map objective of this map. When you have the Dragonite, look at the amount of damage he's putting out on the tower. Whack, whack, whack. Five 
attacks and Death Tower is down. And I do want to point out that right now, Illinois is doing a three-pronged attack. Now, oh, careful, oh. as we do have Kikishio picked off immediately. Before that did occur, we did have on the minimap, we had pressure from the Dragon in the top left. We had pressure from three members, and we had pressure from Abbott there in the middle. But that's the correct play overall as if you're the blue team. You find somewhere where someone is weak, you get a pickup, and then you go defend the huge objective, which right here is going to be the Dragon. Now, Dayun has to hightail it out of here. Once the Dragon Knight is popped, he will be exposed there in Illidan form, but he was close enough to his own gate, managed to do his getaway early enough, and the five-man grouping by Indian University, actually, you know, that's a sacrifice. When you group up as five and you want to take someone down, they stopped the Dragon Knight, but they didn't get a takedown that they would ideally like, so they'll be missing a little bit of experience in the middle and bottom lane, and they're now 30% behind on the way to level 13. And in particular, this composition, Taronda, Sylvanas, Vala, Diablo, very good at the roaming on the southern side. They were all the way up at the north. That's a great decision by Illinois to anchor them up there by sending the Dragon Knight to the north. This has opened up the opportunity for Siege to push at the far south. And oh, uh, were they seen? Were they yeah. seen? Yeah. Just barely. Yeah, you saw Sadahara actually this far there. Delectra, though, comes in from behind, tries to go for the combo, but misses it just barely because Kakisho hit an important stun there to prevent him from picking off Sadaharu. Nice play there. Beautiful teamwork at the same time. In the very far top left, Illidan's by himself, pushing this lane, keeping oh, up the wow. pressure, and he wants to get this fort. If he takes it down, he's just slowly breaking Whittle down in the anniversary. Here he goes, start to chunk it down, and no one's near. Pulling at the minimap, everyone's down here in the bottom right corner for the blue team, uh, getting these objectives, and that means they have to counter push down the bottom right. Yeah, this is a huge push. Easy for takedown there, pretty much for free. Or Dayun, as after he gets this one down, look for him maybe to Hearthstone to try and add his power to defending the bottom. Let's see if that's actually what will happen. Down in bottom right. He's just right. gonna mount up and run down. He's receiving pings from his teammates to head to the far bottom right lane where we're seeing Bruisers, Whoa. Siege Giants, and four of Indiana University's best, no, five. The entire team is down south. And the question is, what is the defense like for Illinois? Okay, Illinois moving in. Rad charges forward. Dion and Mr. Berkey's in the top left corner, chasing down Kays. Buck Nasty hits the sound. So, and Dion finally falls. First time he's fallen in the last couple of games. Kikisho is forced to run away. The Divine Shield is missed. And now, Indiana fighting for the life, wanting to secure a win in game number two, is able to grab a couple of turrets and a couple of takedowns. Yeah, Dion was on the cusp of using his escape metamorphosis. He was about to use it, but a wonderful wailing arrow there by Buck Nasty on the Sylvanas managed to disable enable him from using any of his abilities. And the grand prize they get out of it, a keep and two takedowns. A wonderful change of the pace of this game so far for Indiana Uni University. And they're now 0.7 levels ahead with 15 against 14. And here's where the risk comes in for Indiana, Indiana University to try to exploit this potential advantage. Delectra rushes to the top. The remainder of the team rushes to the minion encampments <laughs> and immediately try to go for the Dragon Knight. And it seems like an excellent read from Illinois. They just oh. need to protect the top. And this is going to be one dead Diablo. Delectra trying to dart out. The health is gigantic. Now he's got enough soul stones. He will resurrect immediately. But this gives a little bit of experience it lowers Diablo's health by a little bit every time he loses soul stones. So that was a good move for Illinois. And the key point here was the Abathur play by Mr. Burks. He plays Toxic Nest in exactly the right situation. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and they saw the Diablo player coming there, and they managed to set up that ambush all thanks to Mr. Burks. And that rebound was important because Indiana University had an advantage, and had they taken that advantage and kept pushing with it with a dragon, now at a, a good 11 minutes, it's very more, it's much more powerful. It does more damage, has a little bit more health. They could have taken that and maybe secured another keep. So that play was very, very important for Illinois. And good job on Abathur, of course, setting up his teammates for that. Now, Yep. Rhaegar yep. immediately heading to the top side to activate the shrine. And it looks like none of the rest of the blue team are there. Indiana would much rather continue the pressure that they had been thematically doing throughout, thanks to Sylvanas. You don't need as many additional objectives when you have Sylvanas on your team to push away. Poor Abathur had to leave his home, but he's leaving a symbiote up on top of that keep to try to keep it alive, Dayun teasing some sort of aggression, some sort of dive into here, but of course we know nothing's coming because the red players are actually quite spread out at the far south side of the map. We actually see a little bit of pushing from Illinois' uh, ETC Wrath. Okay, now immediately the, the blue team comes down. Wrath should hightail it out of there. Illinois will capture the top shrine, and they've been doing exactly what they needed to do. They've purchased enough time 
to get to level 16 themselves. Now they're okay with the fight. Because you might have been wondering, why did they yield the top port so easily? It's because they were not 16 yet. So even as they lose the bottom temple, which Indiana University moved on with all five of the heroes, they will take the top shrine back from the blue team. Now, Tim, I want to ask you, we're pretty regularly seeing Indiana roam as a group of five. What are the circumstances where they'd want to be splitting up? I don't know if you want to split up against a character like Illidan and, of course, Jaina. Heroes that deal with one-on-ones pretty darn well. They bring the burst. They have the helpful damage from Abathur. On this battleground, it's small enough to stay up as five. And I like the uh, the aggression they have here. In game number one, we saw them stay up and they were a bit more passive. This time, they're staying together and being more aggressive so they can pick off their opponents. Because remember, they do have that physical body available because Abathur is on this battleground. So I don't want to see them split up. I'm okay with them um, not splitting up until they win a team fight and then they go grab the dragon. Yeah, uh, I, like, I like the way they're playing it too, uh, Trickster, and that was a good question, Day Night, because, yeah, exactly against this, Abathur, Illidan, don't want to split up. Now, they captured the top. This is a problem, though, because they're not good at splitting up. How are they ever going to get the Dragonite? <laughs> yeah, you're right, and they have to do it by getting a, te a team fight and securing a couple takedowns, because then they have the number advantage. Right now, Steam Together is the best choice for them. They're ahead right now, pulling up the minimap. You can tell they actually have more forts than their opponents. They have a, a decent amount as to where um, we've had two lost here for the red team up here in the uh, bottom and the top. So those two being down, a little bit more map pressure is available here for Indiana University that they can use to their advantage. So oh, it's this is fine for them. Close. They're able to capture the Dragonite, but it was cut short by the Uther there, all the way at the top. Good job, Kakisho as he stopped that from happening. And that's kind of the dilemma that Indiana University is facing here. Really, Indiana is, I think, done the best job, though, of continuing to push the south lane. The fort and the keep are down, and they know it. Uh, they're just going to pressure this again and again and again, getting the bruiser camp at the far south, getting the siege uh, giants in between. And we see Dayun, Sotaharu, trying to find some angle, some hope to pick off an enemy player. But I mean, when they're roaming is five, oh. wilted. Wilted, wilted is way out of position, way far south. Will the support get taken out? No. Not enough follow up. There was a good hammer of justice by Kikisho, but Sotoharu and Dayun, they were too far away to be able to follow up on that, particularly Jaina if she was closer. That could have been very scary for wilted there. But for now, nothing happens yet. Dayun's been pretty much on clearing duty. His job has just been to fight the NPCs rather than any of the characters. It's a glorious job. Yeah. It's got to be done as well. Well, Indiana University is heading to the top here. They're going to start grabbing this shrine. And now the uh, bottom left <laughs> again. It's, it's a whole bunch of check and balances that are happening here. We're it's constantly a game trading. Of and mouse. Yeah, yeah. Just trading shrines left and right. And eventually, as we move to the late game, they will run into each other. It's yeah. a matter of when. Now, all throughout this, there is only the tiniest of level leads for Indiana University. They're about 0.3 levels ahead. So it's nothing too impactful until we get to level 20. We're still far away from that, so we're in a very neutral game state. Now, the only point that we can say is that all throughout this, Illinois is missing a keep. So there are those catapults pushing at the bottom lane. There's the juicy Delectra. Immediately, they try to collapse on that. But where is Abathur? There's the metamorphosis from Mr. Burks, the Abathur player. We see Delectra doing an amazing job with the fire breath. But Delectra winds up falling the first character down. ETC falls as well. Uther down. And suddenly, Sorry. Illinois' team side is looking a little vacant. Rhaegar winds up falling, but Dayum being supported by Abathur. A massive turnaround. And suddenly, Diablo, who has respawned due to the passive trait back home, is trying desperately to run to the front line. Taronda falls as well. A fantastic fight from Illinois. Yeah, Sadaharu has to be careful here. Delectra, although he's not the strongest in terms of damage, he has enough to do that much health bars. Sadaharu may want to sneak all the way to the top here and try and grab the shrine. Just kidding. Abathur is <laughs> being a little bit aggressive. He's, uh, yes, this is my shrine. And now in the middle, we will have the Dragon Knight available. Who's going to grab it? Sadaharu is going to do oh, so. And Illinois wow. gets their first dragon in the game and their level 20. Dayan jumps on Delectra. If they can secure this takedown, that could be big. If Delectra's in trouble here, it doesn't matter. There's enemy fortifications. He's actually too far out. Dayun can jump in. Oh, I'm so surprised he doesn't jump in. But of course, Vala just now coming back. Now she's had to keep. That was so close. If Delectra died there, this could be a very slippery landslide to even try and climb back into this game. But as it stands, sure, level 20 for Illinois. They have a Dragonite, but we're only a quarter away for Indiana to get to level 20. 
And Sadaharu has one of the greatest opportunities as much of Team Indiana was dead at this point in time. They were in the respawn queue waiting to return, and this allowed a full takedown on the center fort as well as the southern. Mr. Burks back again. He loves wearing his Illidan suit, and we see, again, very defensive play from Indiana being unwilling to step forward, just trying to wait for that Dragon Knight to wear off. Kokisho, Kokisho uses Divine Shield on himself. That means he cannot use it on the Yun anymore. He will get taken out immediately. Nice pick off by Indiana University. That's one takedown. It's five versus four. They're aggressively routing out the Illinois team. Wrath get wrapped over his shoulder. Dayun finally jumps in there with the symbiote on him. Gonna start focusing down. Graves Robert, a beautiful ancestral healing. And right now, Dayun is the massive damage dealer. The question is, how much can he sustain trying to save his teammate, Jaina? No, not going to happen. It's all Dayun with the help of the symbiote. And even wow. Illidan cannot withstand the teamwork of Indiana. I mean, Wilted with Rhaegar is so low on health. And I mean, you said it, that ancestral healing. So magnificent. Key. Beautiful, magnificent. <laughs> exactly. And now Abathur stands as the sole defender of the core as four are moving in. There's four, 30 seconds until we have one more member even available here for Illinois. I don't know if there can be a full defense here. Abathur's going to try his best. He can jump on the top of the core, give us some damage. They're focusing down Wilted, but it looks like it might just be a good game here. The core dropping down to 80%, 70%, now 60. Yeah. All the members for the blue team focusing down the core, and we're going to a game number three. What a yes. turnaround! Only two Dragon Knights over the course of the entire game. And how did Indiana manage to make the comeback? Well, they let the Dragon Knight come in and exploited that one overstep, and suddenly key pieces of Illinois started to fall for the first time today ever in the Epic Eight. We have a 1-1. We're going to a game three. Yeah, this was really nicely played. And I really feel that the Electra in particular redeemed himself in this yeah. game, as he just had some of the most clutch plays on Diablo, uh, taking people down. Yeah, I got to agree, especially there in the late game when, uh, of course, the red team, uh, Illinois, was a little bit too aggressive. They stayed a little bit longer than they needed to be. And as soon as Diablo gets on top of you, you're stuck in that team fight. They were able to take out a member very, very quickly. And although Illinois um, started to fight back in a pretty strong manner, they just didn't have the numbers. And that allowed Indiana to group up and push across the middle of the battleground and capitalize on the keep they took out earlier. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the Abathur pick even though he was participating in the team fights and we saw the same sort of cloning of Illidan in that final team fight, it really came down to something you've said again and again. He's just not a body that can absorb health. So as the uh, ultimate that was being used as the cloned Illidan was trying to step forward, they didn't really get much of an advantage. And once that was gone, yeah, he, he flipped easy. over yeah. the gate. Maybe he was a little bit too easy to dispose of that yeah, body. Yeah. It's a short period of time where it's active, but yeah, he flipped over, it was gone, and normally they got a little bit more mileage out of it, uh, guys. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we used to see the Sylvanas just being able to pick off the towers, but the Sylvanas being on the other side of the fence definitely shut that down. Our next map is going to be one we have seen today. It's going to be Cursed Hollow. Uh, again, my favorite map in the map pool, I think. It's just so rich with different objectives and different choices. If you haven't seen it, let's take a look at the map itself to see how these players are going to be structuring their picks. When we come back after this short commercial break, we're going to be heading into game number three between Illinois and Indiana.